Meet Katie Smith, your average mid-20-year-old girl. Well, if you consider this situation average. When Miss Smith was just 24 years old, something startling, unbelievable began growing inside of her, and doctors couldn't figure out what it was. Katie Smith is 28 years old and from Swansea in Wales. Back in 2014, she began gaining weight, and within just a few years, she resembled someone nine months pregnant. Every pregnancy test that she took said negative, but her doctors continued to dismiss her overwhelming concerns. Katie's dress size was increasing at rapid speed, and she was now a size 8. She began to notice that all the weight she was gaining was going directly to her stomach. But still, she was too afraid to see a doctor because she didn't know what was wrong with her. Katie's belly was growing. She was always exhausted and had a serious boyfriend. She went to the doctor thinking she was pregnant but was told she was merely fat. At this point, she saw no other option but to see a specialist. Katie collapsed at work. I was told by her co-workers that she'd fainted. She went to the doctor, who said it was stress, and put it down to being too stressed out. Katie was going about her life, trying to avoid her situation. Only after several blackouts at work, difficulties breathing, and excessive weight gain did she seek help. Doctors blamed other causes and things going on in her life for unexplained problems. Katie's GP ordered an ultrasound to check if she was pregnant after her blood test came back negative. When the doctors saw her expression, he had a look of fear in his eyes and told doctors something was wrong. Her life was in danger and she needed a CAT scan to find out what was happening inside her body. Katie definitely wasn't pregnant. The reason for her large belly was actually the result of a huge ovarian mass. A cyst is a fluid-filled sac that can develop on a woman's ovary. They're extremely common and usually don't cause harm and most often disappear. She'll lose one ovary and may be hospitalized for longer. Katie's mother lives in Australia, so she decided not to worry her, but since the mystery was solved, she felt it was time to let her family know. Within two days, her mother arrived, but unfortunately her dad had to stay back in Australia. Even with the time difference, he was always just a phone call away. She had all the support she needed and was ready for the dreadful day. The doctor informed Katie that in four weeks' time, she'd be set for surgery. The time finally arrived and Katie was ready for surgery. In the short time between her initial consultation and surgery, her stomach grew another five inches. The high-risk obstetrics consultant she was referred to said surgery was a must and he was going to cut her open from her chest bone down to her pelvic bone like an old-fashioned C-section. Those were some comforting words. The day finally came in the blink of an eye. Katie was handed a surgery gown and a pair of socks. She put them on and was taken by the nurse. Her body was paralyzed, knowing that at any minute a giant needle would be stabbed into her body. Katie was so uneasy and difficult that she needed to put her head down by two nurses. She wouldn't stop moving and they needed to put the needle inside her. She says what it really felt like. The cysts accounted for one-third of her entire body weight. Katie Smith lost her right ovary, but doctors reassured her she'll still be able to have children. She says that her health is much better than last year, both physically and mentally. Katie thanks her family, friends, and co-workers for all their help during her recovery. Alexandra and Antonin, a couple from the Czech Republic, learned they were expecting twins. The birth alone was about to be legendary and nobody knew at the time. They were already parents of one and now they were about to become parents of three. This was not what they were planning for. Canova's doctor and husband were becoming more concerned about her. Despite this, she always remained calm and collective. They ordered a second ultrasound to get to the bottom of it. She didn't understand the secrecy and the fact that they didn't notice she was standing right there. Canova's pregnancy wasn't the norm for a woman expecting twins. She was following everything exactly how she was supposed to and was eating correctly. The doctors broke the news that she was not carrying twins. So, immediately, she assumed that one of the babies had passed away. Her heart fell to her stomach when the doctors told her she wasn't carrying twins. When you're expecting twins, this is the worst news you can get. It makes a mother feel like she's no longer carrying a child. The actuality, on the other hand, was quite the contrary. She was told she wasn't having twins, or triplets, by the physicians. This appeared perplexing, especially since she'd not undergone any reproductive therapy, and hence was unlikely to have numerous children. At this point, it appeared that everything was conceivable. 
the physicians confirmed her pregnancy with quadruplets among themselves and then with Canova. This perplexed her, especially because she'd already been astonished to learn she was expecting twins. With five children, they were about to have a full house. The surprises were finally over. Or so they thought. The couple dashed back to the store to check up on supplies for their newborns. They now had everything they required to raise four children. When they went back for another checkup, though, the ultrasound revealed something quite different. When Alexandra and her husband Antonin were getting acclimated to the prospect of having four children, something in the ultrasound caught their attention. They weren't just having two or four children anymore. They were having five. Because all the fetuses in Canova's belly, the physicians didn't see the fifth baby immediately right away. It was difficult to capture a decent image because they were all moving about. Suddenly, something else in the scan caught their attention. Was it possible that a sixth child had been born? She wasn't anticipating a sixth child, but now that she was prepared, she wanted to know if it would be a boy or a girl. She needed to know what she should wear and what color she should wear, but the physicians were unable to provide her with such answers at this time. Canova would have to wait until the next day to learn the genders of her children. When Canova went into labor, 40 people waited for her and the quintuplets in the waiting room. With so many babies involved, it was obvious that a lot might go wrong, but perhaps her life was also in jeopardy. The hospital staff and all on-call doctors were unaccustomed to dealing with so many newborns at once, and they needed all the help they could get. They even brought a cinematographer to document the event on film. There wasn't even enough room for Canova's family and hubby. Each infant was cared for by two nurses as soon as they were born. Because there were so many deliveries at once, they had to check their vitals and make sure everything was working smoothly. All the nurses were summoned to keep an eye on the babies. Canova was compelled to have a C-section due to her circumstances. She was advised that this was the most responsible and secure strategy for ensuring that the infants were delivered in the safest and most secure manner imaginable. All the newborns needed attention, but the tiniest one needed additional assistance. Canova and her baby stayed in the hospital for several days before being released and ready to begin a new life together. All the births went off without a hitch, and they now have a large, happy family of five. The big question now was how many boys and girls the couple had in the end. To be honest, all we worry about is that they made it out alive. In addition to Canova's mother and her husband's mother, their house was about to get a little bit fuller. They arrived to assist the parents in bringing the babies home from the hospital, but they also moved into their home to provide additional support. They didn't stop there. They also sought help from the government, as the newborns had quickly become national news. Alexandra and Antonin were overjoyed with their eight-member family, which included four boys named Daniel, Alex, and Martin. Tereska, the lone girl, was the fifth. She even broke a record, it turns out. Elena Makarova, an obstetrician in the room, performed some investigation after the birth and learned that this was a historical event. It was obvious that having five children was a big thing, but it wasn't clear what made them so unique. The obstetrician was interviewed by the Telegraph, and she stated that no mention of quintuplets had ever been made and that she had all the records dating back to 1949. Canova was the first mother in the entire area to give birth to five children. Quintuplets are only born once in every 480 years in the Czech Republic, according to research. The chances of having quadruplets in this country is about 1 in 7 million. They made the decision to look at these figures all throughout the world. Quintuplets are uncommon and are usually the result of reproductive treatments such as in vitro fertilization. Canova, on the other hand, conceived these children naturally, and the explanation is likely to be found in her genes. Both Canova and Croshin said their families have a lot of twins. Given that quintuplets run in both the families, it's not a surprise they had quintuplets. Wow. Five infants must be exhausting. For their enormous family, they were receiving many donations and helpful hands. Apart from financial assistance, they had family and friends who were prepared to help in any way they could. People from all around the world wanted to help in any way they could, including with money, as soon as they heard about the Quint's birth. This kind of news is uncommon, and everyone was eager to help raise funds in any way they could. Unfortunately, the family was unable to receive outside donations because the government decided to provide aid to the family. They assigned them a babysitter, but they soon realized that with six children, this was insufficient. Because the system had never seen a circumstance like Canova's and her family's, it refused to provide additional government support. 
Simply, our system is not prepared for such repeated instances of good luck, the Czech Ministry of Social Affairs said in a statement. Despite the fact that the family has faced numerous challenges, they are nevertheless ecstatic to be raising their children and look forward to each birthday and celebration that their family of five shares. While caring for five children was certainly challenging, Canova and her husband have demonstrated that everything is possible if you set your mind to it. Given their birth circumstances, these newborns have a 95% chance of growing up healthy, but they face danger every day. Canova is still as lively and loving five years later as she was when the quintuplets were born. She's also inspired by the fact that her circumstance is so unusual. The chances of having quintuplets are one in around 48 million pregnancies. There are around 800 quintuplets in the world, with 130 of them conceived at random. Since Alexandra found out she was with quintuplets, time's flown, and she never imagined a life filled with so much love and happiness. Despite her deep affection for her children, all she knows is that she has no plans to have additional children. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.